Welcome to our lecture online. Now we want to make a closer relationship between the concept of a vector, the circle that encompasses the vector, and it doesn't have to be the unit circle, it just can be any circle, radius r, and the relationship between the x and the y components of the vector and the trigonometric functions, the cosine and the sine. So here we have a circle of radius r, and it turns out that radius r is equal to the magnitude of the vector v. So we have a vector that starts at the origin and ends at the edge of that circle there. So therefore the, the length of that vector must therefore equal the radius of the circle. Now if we project the vector down to the x-axis, this distance here is the length or the magnitude of the x component of the vector. And if we project the vector onto the y-axis, this length right here is the length or the magnitude of the y component of the vector. In red, you can see that this is then the actual x component of the vector, not just the magnitude, because there's no error on here, simply this means magnitude, but this means an actual vector pointing in the x direction of length v sub x. And here we have a vector, an actual vector, pointing in the y direction and uh, with length v sub y. Now we know that we can represent the vector v here with simply putting a little arrow on top of it, but we can also represent it as the sum of its two components, the x and the y components, and they by themselves are also vectors. The vectors can be written as a magnitude times the a unit vector in the direction that they're pointing. So the x component is pointing in the x direction, to, so this is the unit vector in the x direction, this is the unit vector in the y direction, so it's the magnitude of the x component multiplied by unit vector in the x direction plus the magnitude of the y component multiplied times the unit vector in the y direction, and the sum of those two represents the vector v. If you don't like x and y to represent the unit vectors in the x and the y direction, you can use i and j, which are the unit vectors pointing in the x and the y direction, which you typically find in mathematics text. If you want to find the magnitude of the vector, v without the arrow is the same thing as writing v with the arrow, meaning the vector, and absolute value signs around it. That means the magnitude of that vector, how long that vector is. And using Pythagorean theorem, we can find that by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components. Now, v sub x and v sub y can be represented as the magnitude of the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of the vector v, times the cosine of the angle to find the x component, and times the sine of the angle to find the y component. Now, it doesn't matter if we place the vector here or if we place the vector there. It doesn't really matter. Vectors can be moved anywhere as long as the magnitude doesn't change and direction doesn't change. So in essence, we could have drawn v sub y over here, like this, and it doesn't make any difference. So there you can clearly see that it's part of a triangle, a right angle triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem and the trigonometric functions. So if we're now going to express the magnitudes of the x and the y components in terms of the trigonometric functions, we can do it like this. V sub x can be written as v times the cosine of theta, and since it's squared, we square that. Same for v sub y, it can be represented as v times the sine of theta, and we square that. Then if we factor out a v squared, we have a cosine squared plus a sine of squared, which of course we know is equal to 1. Therefore, we get the square root of v squared, which is equal to v, which essentially is equal to the radius of the circle. And so there's how we can compare a vector to its x and y components, to the components written in terms of the trigonometric functions, and the magnitude of vector in terms of the radius of the circle that encompasses the vector. And so there's a good representation of how we can look at vectors.